Monster. Hey everybody, and welcome to a Veterans Day episode of the Hogside. It's 11-11 when we're recording this, so happy Veterans Day to y'all. Steve, happy Veterans Day to you, since you are a veteran, and I know you don't like talking about it on the show, but I will wish you a happy Veterans Day there. Um, we have a good game coming up, it looks like, Washington versus Detroit. I'm excited for it. I I've been watching Detroit film all day because I've been able to actually sit at home while I've been working from home because, you know, government's closed. <laughs> so your work consisted of watching Detroit Lions game film. And checking my email, yes. <laughs> of which I got none because, again, I work for the government. No one else is working, only as contractors. <laughs> <laughs> we should have waited to do this show at 11.11 on 11.11. I would be asleep. I, I, I barely <laughs> make shows it. that late. Are yeah. you kidding me? You, you, love, you love being up that late? I, I hate being up that late. Like, I want to... <laughs> I, I fall asleep usually three or four times... Uh, before the a day before eleven o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I'm a night. I'm a weird night owl because I don't like nightlife. But you I'm are a up. night owl and a morning person. You just don't like sleeping. I'm not. Yeah, I guess I'm anti-sleep. You I are. You are very much anti-sleep. Like I went to bed at one thirty last night and got up at five for yeah, no real yeah. reason. Yeah, I I like uh I, I I used to like staying up late. These days, like nine o'clock, ten o'clock, I'm usually falling asleep. So I used to play play loud electric guitars all night long, right? And I can't do that now, right. unfortunately. But which bums me out. Well, yeah. If you lived in a city, no one would care. <laughs> I you... have people in the house. Yeah. I, you know, that's the problem. If you lived in a city, no one would care. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, living in the suburbs, yes, people call the cops if you play an electric guitar. At, that my night. amp is loud enough to notify the entire neighborhood that yes. i'm up yes exactly I, I have a large enough amp that that will do that whereas in my neighborhood people shoot off fireworks at two in the morning and no one does a thing <laughs> realistically i cannot turn my amp above two and, oh, know, and put Steve, it that way. i'm saying fireworks with air quotes <laughs> fireworks quote unquote <laughs> yes yes uh, really we pretend they're always millimeter <laughs> we'll firearms <laughs> yes let, let, <laughs> we're gonna pretend they're fireworks though um all right let's let's talk about this game a little bit uh, Washington takes on the Lions, which, uh, like I said, I think it could be an interesting game. Um, I, I, I was watching some of the Lions tape today, uh, and I, I will say this. Matthew Stafford is playing better than I've ever seen him play. Uh, you know, he to me, he's the most pocket quarterback you will ever see, but at the same time, like, he... He used to always take too long to throw the ball. Now he's getting it out really quick. He's got, like, Aaron Rodgers hit the back foot, drop drop the ball off kind of thing going on lately. Well, it's funny you say that because if you watch the Minnesota film, I used to think of Aaron Rodgers in his early days as a real gunslinger, and right. he is, but he used to go deep a lot. He had Calvin Johnson you run all over the place. That Minnesota game, he only went beyond short passes a couple, a handful of times. Well, yeah, because he doesn't game. have – you know, elite receivers like he used to. Yeah, yeah, he does exactly. And so it's almost West Coast offensey sort of offense from Detroit. And the problem with the, the Lions, and and from his numbers wise, he's about despite the fact that he's what twelve years in. Mm -hmm. I mean, his numbers this year are about at his career average. He's averaged in sixty two point six percent completion percentage. His career average is sixty two point five. Quarterback rating ninety two point four. You know, his career average is 89.5. So he's right there. The The team sucks. The Lions right. suck. But Matthew Stafford is basically what he always was. And, it just he does not have the talent around him. And, and, you know, the numbers point to one thing, but I'm, ta I'm talking more about the eyeball test for me. Yeah. For most of his career, I've always looked at Matthew Stafford as this guy who just chucked a ball up. He had elite receivers, so it didn't matter that he was probably throwing – 30 uh, passes a year that should have been interceptions. When you have, you know, Megatron, <laughs> most of those are not interceptions. Now he's getting it out accurately, and his numbers are about the same, like you said, but, you know, I, I watched 
that game, I didn't see him throw. I know he had two picks, but I didn't see him throw a lot of stuff that was just like chuck it up for grabs anymore. He like didn't. He, he, we were one or two of them, but that was about it. Yeah. You know, and the difference is, they, listen to these weapons. I know you know Alex, but for yeah. the benefit of the audience here, Danny Amendola. That's a good. Uh, you know, that's a good slot receiver. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was Tom Brady's, you know, whipping boy there for a while. Um, T.J. Hawkinson, who was the celebrated tight end right. out of Iowa two years ago, that uh, that is the guy who replaced Logan Thomas, by the way. And then you know, Kenny Galladay, decent talent. Marvin Jones, decent talent. It's basically those four guys: mm-hmm. Danny Amendola, T.J. Hawkinson, Marvin Jones. Uh, Kenny Galladay, <laughs> that's his. That's his weapons, and that's none of those guys are Megatron. You no. know. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I mean, listen. If Matthew Stafford was a Redskin or a Washington, whatever, um, I would be ecstatic. Even Matthew Stafford today, he yes, he's getting old. You know, yes, he's you know how old is he now? I mean, he's in his thirties, mid thirties. Yeah. He and yeah. He's, as more of a statue in the pocket now than ever before in some ways. Yeah, he's 32. Uh, you know, like, I don't know if he's ever been able to even run outside the hash marks in his career. Like, that's the, how much of a pocket quarterback he is. Like, well, if he scrambles, you know, it's I, I can move three feet left or right. That's about it, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, in terms of his running, you know, he's only had a handful of rushes all year. Right. You know, he's had, that's 10, he's had less than 20 rushes, scrambles all year. He's not going to scramble. No. This is not Lamar Jackson. This is, he's, of course, very experienced, but this is a team in which our supposedly vaunted defensive line really needs to take control. Right. Because for one, the other thing is, I was not impressed with Detroit's offensive line. No, they're they're very average, if even, yeah. Yeah, right. And so, uh, you know, this is a team that Washington really and truly, really ought to be able to pressure this quarterback Mm -hmm. and get to this quarterback. Um, They have given up 21 sacks, which is not horrible. Um, And the reason it's not horrible is because Matthew Stafford gets the ball out quickly, as you said. Right, right. I mean, 20... 21 over how many games are we at? That's ranked 21st in the league. And uh, for context, Washington has given up a lot more than that. They've given up 28, which is 31st in the league. Right. For context. Okay. That's depressing. I didn't know that we're 31st in the league in sacks a lot. And not only that, but that's only in eight games. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Think about that. There's other teams that have given up less in nine games. Right. Oh, that's fun. Um, Get to the offense though later. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll switch sides (laughs) eventually. Um. So if you were to point at Stafford in this offense, Amendola, like I said, or like we were briefly talking about, good slot receiver. Um, probably, I know he's older, but if you have a slot receiver like this, a guy who can just run a crossing route and he gets that five-year dump off and he can turn into a first down, that gives a veteran like Stafford such a great little safety valve. It, they're They're like good tight ends, you know? You you have these safety valve guys. It's something Washington's lacked for the last few years. But well, yeah, they, Washington's lacked a lot of things for the last well, few yeah, years. But, but yes, we had we had that with Crowder, and then we've never found a good replacement. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, Amendola is there. You, you mentioned the tight end, Hawkinson. He, yeah, Hawkinson. Yet I noticed during their last game, two of the Vikings' interceptions were by linebackers. So, yes. I mean, if if Stafford's looking that way, athletic linebackers might be able to make a little hay here. Yeah, well, and also, I mean, remember, Hawkinson is the leading target. Mm-hmm. He's had 49 targets on the the next most is Marvin Jones, the wide receiver. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Amendola with 41 and then Marvin Jones with 41, both of them. So he's looking Hawkinson a lot. Right. And the linebackers are the ones who are covering Hawkinson. Now, what scares me tremendously about this game is the fact that we our linebackers are John Bostic and KPL and Cole Holcomb. Right. And now we have yet another pretty darn good tight end for them to cover, and it's probably not going to go well, especially with a quarterback like Matthew Stafford, who uh, is obviously certainly in a what, top 10 quarterback maybe in the league, roughly? Uh, I mean, in his best years, yeah. I don't know if he's there anymore because it's such a quarterback-rich league these days. I, the ballpark is, you Yeah, know. ballpark, he can... Yeah. You could still argue he's a top 10. He and can I, still sling it. Yeah, he can sling it. Um, 
I just think the fad now is these quarterbacks who are more athletic, so that's why people might start putting them down. Um, you know. Yeah, but I'm just talking about like an offense like Detroit's, yeah. where as you pointed out, as a pocket offense, you've got a quarterback with a gigantic, humongous arm, one of the strongest arms in the league, probably even still at 32. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what do they have? An elite tight end. Yep, yep, elite tight end. Doesn't bode well for the Washington whatever's defense. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And I, I don't know what you do with him. Uh, I mean, Collins is done for the season, so he. I, you can't use the classic safety coverage that a lot of people would want to use. Um, I don't know if I'd even want Landon Collins covering yeah, maybe not. TJ Hawkinson. Maybe not. Uh, well, I, I will say this. Uh, my first thought when I was looking at them, I, I would maybe take Kendall Fuller and say, hey, I know you're usually on the outside, but I'd put him on Amendola. Amendola is my number one concern as wide receivers go. Like, uh, You know what? I, I mean, yeah, it, what you're saying makes sense. I just don't know if... Jack Del Rio does that. really going to do that. Yeah. How many times have we really seen Kendall Fuller travel this no, year? No, we Not haven't. Not much. Really? It's, yeah. They play any... left, right. They really yeah, I do. wouldn't swear that it's never happened, but, I mean, I don't recall it ever happening. So, I just don't – I mean, I get what you're saying, and I don't disagree with you, but I just don't think Del Rio is going to do it. No, probably not. Um, I, I think this is going to be an interesting test for the secondary because uh, the last – couple quarterbacks they face let, let's be honest not good um you know daniel jones you know he's you know a turnover machine i know he didn't we didn't have any interceptions last week but he, he doesn't scare you and, and well you know yeah the, think about this for a minute dallas they didn't scare us yeah the eagles carson wentz they had a horrible game terrible offensive line mm-hmm. lamar you know going down the list of quarterbacks washington's face um, Lamar's Murray, a good quarterback, Cal- but for different reasons. Kyler Murray's a runner. Yeah. Um, Baker Mayfield, average at best. Lamar Jackson's a runner. Goff, yeah, pocket guy, not at Stafford's level. No. The Giants, you talked about. Dallas with Dak Prescott, different story, but he, they had whatever a Ben DiNucci is, who was the guy who was under centered. So this is probably the best pocket passer they've faced all year. Oh, without question. Yeah. Without question. Best pure, I mean, and there aren't many pure pocket passers left in the league these days. But, no. uh, you know, Stafford being one of them, he is definitely one of the best now. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how the defensive secondary kind of plays this. It's going to be interesting to see if, you know, this supposedly great defensive line of ours can feast on a guy who doesn't move. You know, like, well, I, yeah. I can understand why they can't get Lamar Jackson down. You know where Matt Stafford's going to be every snap. Like this is the game mm-hmm. where they need to. This group needs to needs to make it happen. <laughs> right, because you know? I can tell you with a hundred percent certainty, just draw a line behind the center. That's where Matt Stafford's standing every snap. Uh, he's a lot like ben, uh, Tom Brady in that regard. Yeah, he is. He does know how to climb the pot, climb the ladder in the pocket a little bit. Um, he doesn't but, do it like uh, Brady does though. No, no, Brady's the expert at it yeah. for sure. <laughs> But but your point is valid. I mean, he's a pocket guy. He's not going to scramble unless he absolutely has to. Um, and by the way, you know, I, I wrote in my takeaways article for this week about the Giants game, you know, about yet another criticism about, um, you know, our defensive line was what we're talking about here. I wasn't trying to excuse. I re- actually read a couple comments in our comment section. I wasn't trying to excuse the linebackers, you know, right. because they're definitely part of it. My point was simply that the defensive line is underperforming, and both of those groups – are going to be in front and center this week. Mm-hmm. Linebackers because of T.J. Hawkinson. Um, the pass rushers, rushers for what you just said, Alex. I yep. mean, they can't. They're not going to get away with letting Matthew Stafford of all quarterbacks just sit back there with tons of time. Yeah, if that happens, I think there needs to be some serious conversations about, you know, what what is going on here. Because, uh, I mean, we're fans, and I think you and I know a little something about football. I have trouble assessing what exactly is, like, wh- where is this calculation not adding up with this line at this point? Because, in my mind, you got five first-rounders, you should be getting two, three sacks That's a game what minimum. I saying. Yeah. Maybe that these guys just aren't as good as what they should be, you yeah, know? I, it, I give Chase Young a pass because right. he's a rookie. So what is and playing he's well? Had a, I, I, he's, had, he's played with, he's not got the stats, and yeah. he's not getting home. But he's getting double teamed, triple, he's been teamed, triple teamed a couple sometimes, times. Yeah, 
yeah, he's making an impact. He needs to take the next step. But I mean, hell, he's only in eight games in, for right. God's sakes, you know. But these other guys, uh, I mean, yeah, Montez Sweat has improved greatly, right? You know, for sure. But I wouldn't put Montez Sweat in the elite top end of pass rushers in the league. Oh no, either. no, not elite, no. And John Allen, I mean, you know, I think truth of the matter is John Allen may be a three, four, you know, defensive end more than anything. Yeah. Payne is done okay. Like, you see yeah, these he's had plays. His moments. Yeah. He, he's more of a, like, he has moments, especially in the run game where he'll just burst through and get the, you know, stop behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's more of a question, a uh, topic for the offseason that we need to ha- uh, oh, sure. discuss at some point. I mean, but... the truth of the matter is their best interior defensive lineman is a fifth round draft choice from Temple that's on IR. Right. That's right. The truth. Well. <laughs> Uh, he's probably the most balanced, you know. I, yeah. I, I will give Payne credit. I think he might be their best run stuffer. Hands like, uh, this is one of the worst run defenses in the league. Yeah, well, he's the only guy. <laughs> we don't have any. <laughs> we don't have any linebackers who are good at it. Speaking so. of running, by the way, we'd be remiss in not mentioning two guys. Sure. One, somebody we know, Adrian Peterson. The other one is DeAndre Swift. Yeah, DeAndre. I mean, the obvious narrative of Peterson is there, right? I mean, Peterson. Of course, of course. we talked about that revenge. last week. Yeah, right. But don't sleep on DeAndre Swift. I was impressed with what he did in against uh, the Vikings. He can run. Yeah, he can. You know, um, you know. So I mean, again, Washington not a good run defense. No. So they've got a guy who's a quality runner and another dude who probably wants revenge on the team that cut him. You know. Detroit's offensive line is not great. I don't think they open up big holes for the running backs on a consistent basis, but you know it's weakness on weakness to a certain extent here. It is, and about. and the thing that you got to watch for, I noticed Detroit does use a lot of fullback in their running, so they yes. get that lead blocker, which AP always loved, and, and that helps him gash people. Detroit, um, Detroit's really not trying to fool anybody with their no, offense. No, 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 no. I, I mean, you got a defensive-minded head coach. You, you you tend to get a little bit vanilla on offense when that happens. Yeah, I mean, they're not fooling anybody. You're not seeing a bunch of weird gadget plays and a bunch right. of jet sweeps and a bunch of misdirection and all that. I mean, they're running out of the eye. They're running out of offset eye. Mm-hmm. You know, they're hitting the gaps. Uh, the passing offense is pretty simple, right? pretty standard. Uh, they just line up and try to beat you. Now, they haven't been beating too many people, but... I'm sure you know this, Alex. So, but for the benefit of the audience here, let's talk a minute about who the Lions have played. They lost to the Packers. Right. They, Good they team. Played, they played the Saints. Good team. <laughs> Good team. They did beat the Cardinals, who beat up on Washington. Right. You know, and even the Vikings from last week, the Vikings have now kind of got it together more so than they had at the beginning of the year. They face much better teams. They've had a much more difficult schedule than has Washington. Yes, they have. And they play in a better conference right now. So, you know, they, they've division, faced better. Yeah. Com- hmm? Division. Or, yes, you said division. conference. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Division. So, I guess my point is, you dump Detroit in the NFC East, they might, they'd be leading the NFC East. I mean, you dump That's Chicago, who might be the worst team in the and I've seen North. You put them yeah. in the East, they're probably the best team in the East, too. Right. Yeah. So don't sleep on, I guess my saying here is, don't sleep on the Lions just because they're the, the Lions. They are, and, and they're three and five, mm-hmm. you know, and they've got a weirdo as a head coach and all that stuff. I mean, this is a better team than you, than you might give them credit for. Yeah. Uh, let's switch sides, talk about the Washington offense versus this defense. Uh, do we have to? Uh, yeah, we have to. I, I, I have one keen observation I made from watching the last two games uh, this morning. Okay. Uh, you know, like I said, um, the Vikings had a very good running day versus the Lions. However, the Indianapolis Colts seem to struggle a lot running the ball when, when you watch their game film. And I'm worried Washington will struggle because we run a lot more of what Indy does than what the Vikings do. The Vikings were gashing them going A-gap, B-gap, zone runs, you know, right north-south, not what we do and what Indy does, which is a lot of this, you know, toss, trying to get to the edge, end around, you know, run outside tackle stuff. Listen, the Vikings also had Dalvin Cook. Yes, they have. The Vikings have, have some good running backs. Light years. He yes. ran for 200 yards in that game, by the way. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, light years ahead of any running back on Washington's roster. Sure, sure. But I, I'm just saying the style of running that they do is something we don't do. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They barely did it at all again last week against the Giants. Mm-hmm. They almost didn't run the ball you no, know, against the no, Giants. No, they didn't. And, and yes, I mean, um, what's his name? Uh, um, McKissick had 14 targets. You know, or fourteen receptions, I believe. Yeah. You know, fourteen, nine receptions, fourteen targets. I think. Um, mm-hmm. That's Something. what Scott Turner likes. That's what he did with Christian McCaffrey. Sure. You know, that's what he likes to do. But I think you're right, in because that was my observation as well. Is I think Detroit's just not good. Their, Detroit's interior defensive line, just bad against the run. Right. They're just flat out bad against the run. But we can't capitalize. This is another like weakness on weakness. Right. Thing. We we don't have we don't have the roster to try and take advantage of a bad defensive tackle. No, it's like the resistible force versus the movable object. Right, right. And and frankly, if if you see Washington trying to do a lot of the outside stuff, that's where Detroit's good. Like, they can get to the outside and break up a run on the edge. Yeah. No, I mean, and their, their defensive rushing st- statistics are terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, they're 29th in rushing yards. They're giving up uh, 4.8 yards per attempt. And a lot of that was their stats got annihilated by Dalvin cook. <laughs> right. You right. know, but like still, said, I, just, I think you're, he had 200 exactly right. and I think they had another hundred from everybody else. To <laughs> that game just about this craziness. Yeah. 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 I think, did, did I see that Kirk cousins only threw like 12 balls or something last week? Do, okay. Do you're going to make me look it up. I hadn't pulled it. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Um, Kirk cousins, 13 completions, 200, uh, 20 attempts, 220 yards passing okay, 13. So. Yeah. And um, the only other guy who had carries was Alexander Madison with 12 carries, 69 yards. So they ended up with just under 300 yards rushing last right. week, the Vikings against the Lions. Yeah. So that's some 1980s football. 13 pass completions and 300 rushing yards. <laughs> exactly. Now, can Washington do that? Absolutely not. They are a tr- No. They are an atrociously bad running team. No. Atrociously Our best day awesome. was a guy got 100 yards, you know? Like <laughs> Against it, the worst, single worst running defense in the league sure. in the Dallas Cowboys. Sure, yeah. Um, so what's the so, game plan then for this game? That's you know that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah, and, and that's where I'm struggling. Like I watched, you know, these last two games that Detroit played, and the thing that you need to take advantage of this team can't do. Uh, I, I, I mean, yeah, guys are completing easy screen passes to running backs. Uh, you know, in both those games. I think they leave running backs open in the passing game pretty often, but I don't know if you can build the entire offense on just that for a whole game. You you need at least a couple different things that you're going to do. Um, and I'm I not, don't disagree with you. Yeah, I, I'm this not really sure Washington's what it is. Offense is terrible. Yeah, I mean the only thing, and this is the only wild card. We saw when Alex Smith came in. I know he had the three interceptions, but he was very accurate in a in a lot of his plays. And the one thing he does that Kyle Allen didn't do very well and Dwayne Haskins is terrible at is he hits guys in stride so they can get some yards after catch. Allen and yeah. Haskins struggle with that a lot. Cam Sims is thanking Alex Smith to this day. <laughs> yeah, well, even Terry McLaurin had that one great touchdown right. where you know he it got him in the perfect spot. He kind of forced himself open, I know, with uh, breaking that one tackle. But it was an amazing catch. The yeah, play you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's amazing what can happen when you have an accurate quarterback. Yes. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I think we almost forgot what it was like because it's been a couple years. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I, and I, I hope you know maybe with a week of practice, Smith, you know, the turnovers go away, and, and we just keep keep the good stuff. I'm willing to give them a break on the turnovers a little bit. They were the two, the, the first one I don't blame them for. The second two, yeah, were terrible. But, I mean, it's very uncharacteristic of him historically in his career right. to do that. Right. And so I'm willing to chalk it up to a bad day, you know, and let him fight on next week. I mean, what, what's the old week. saying in baseball? You are what the back of your baseball card says in the end. It, like, right. You know, you can always I mean, kind of look, go back to that. He's had a bad day. 
Yeah. You know, he threw three interceptions. So it's, I didn't go back and look it up. I'm not going to, but I, I bet you he hadn't had too many games like that in his career. You probably have to go back to early San Francisco or something. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm not going to do it live on the air. But I mean, no, the point no. is, um, I I just think it was more anomaly than anything else. So, so I guess the question is, do you think now if he gets a w- week of work, can Smith take advantage of that secondary? Which, because Detroit's. Secondary is probably, you know, no one there scares you, frankly, when you're looking at their secondary. Not really. I mean, Desmond Trufant has talent. Yeah. Uh, but the other three of these guys, I couldn't pick out of a lineup. Right, exactly. Honest. Trufant, you, you know the name. I, I don't know if he really worries you. You just kind of know he's there. No, but he's their one number one guy. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, like, I'm not worried about the secondary. I know they, they're linebacker, like, no one on this set defense really scares me, but no. no one the Giants defense scares me, and they couldn't move the ball against the Giants either, so... Because <laughs> our offense is horrible, Alex, yes. you know this. It's yes, terrible. I know, I know. It's the, my one biggest... other this. It's my biggest disappointment with Ron Rivera, because the offense is actually worse than it was last year. In, you know, in a lot in of ways, ways it is, yeah. Yeah, in some ways. And he's just utterly not made this offense any better at all. I love you know look I love Antonio Gibson nice you know nice pick you know has talent but good complimentary piece yeah but I mean when he's the focal point of your offense your offense has a problem well I mean he's just another Chris Thompson in, in a lot of remember how Chris Thompson everyone was in love with Chris Thompson what was that five yeah. years ago because he was on pace for fifteen hundred yards or something ridiculous yeah until he kept getting hurt yeah then he starts getting like these are these guys are nice complimentary pieces these uh scat back types but they're not usually going to be the primary you know role in the offense they need a feature back they they still need a feature back and that brings me to one topic that I wanted to bring up uh love is off of IR and he's going to start practicing with the team i don't i i'll be shocked if he's active this week but you know, like uh, he he's the one guy that to me still says he could be a feature back from that. Yeah, I mean, I've I like Love in college. Mm-hmm. I think there's a huge obvious question mark as to whether he can get back to the 2017 version of oh, himself. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, but you're right in saying that if there's somebody on the team who's a feature back, it's him. Right. Right. He probably won't get there. It's probably he's probably been away too long, and this knee stuff, all that stuff. I get it. And certainly they shouldn't rely on it. But if there's anybody who's here now who can get there, it's probably him. And to be honest, as bad as Peyton Barber has been, would it be so awful to activate Love and put Barber on the bench for? Oh no! You know, I mean, you know, you know, I've been on the like, can we just cut Peyton Barber? Train? <laughs> I, I we had a better Peyton Barber in Adrian Peterson. I still don't understand why we got. No, I, I've never understood it. Like yeah. Peyton. I'm, I, you must really love guys who can only get you one yard if you love Peyton Barber. <laughs> There's something about that one singular yard at a time that's appealing. Right, right. Well, because he doesn't really lose yards. I mean, I'll give him that. I, I don't I don't think he's had more than one or two runs for a loss, but it's just one yard every time. <laughs> he can take one full step forward, and then he falls down, no right. matter what. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, if, Peterson hadn't had a great game, a great season either this year. No, but he's damn sure better than Peyton Barber. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I mean, Adrian Peterson still has that the eyes and the ability to find those holes. Right, and he's not playing behind a good offensive line either. No, well, he wouldn't be here, so maybe it's a good comp to say this is what he'd be doing. <laughs> yeah, but I um, just yeah, we've already. I don't want to beat. No, 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 we don't want to do that. Horse to do. Uh, we've already beaten it to death. I. I I, I'm hoping, I, I've got fingers crossed and toes crossed that uh, Bryce Love can get on the field for like two or three games left in the season or however long, because he has 21 days till they can activate him or they can act till yeah, they decide he's got to 21 do. days. Yeah, to there's a window wait it out. right now. Yeah, They technically right. could activate him for this week, but they still have 21 days from today. I mean, they did it with Brandon Scherf, but that's Brandon Scherf, right? You know, and difference. they well, they did it with Steve Sims too, technically. So maybe they're but, being but, on the cautious side when they let people off IR. I don't know. I thought they were on the cautious side, putting him on IR in the first place. It was. It looked like to me it was less 
that he wasn't healthy and more that he just needed more time to kind of get get right. it together. That that was kind of my so maybe maybe they do decide to move him up maybe. this week or next week instead of waiting three weeks. I'm all for it. When you're two and six, yeah, you've got Peyton Barber as your third string backup, and you're playing the Lions. There's no better time to add. You might as well activate him. Yeah, give hell? him a shot. I mean, yeah, it, this is the. T- I mean, because what we were talking about earlier, you need someone who can run through the A and B gaps, and that's what he does. Right. And he's better at it than Barber. He's better at it than Gibson or anything. Better than guys. everybody. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't if he gets activated. I would say he's a sleeper to maybe get like 50 yards or something and be a big part of the running game. Now, I've been on my Twitter blackout, with the exception of advertising our content. I've been on a Twitter blackout. So I don't know whether there's any rumors floating around about him being activated. No, no, no rumors. That's just my conjecture. Like, no rumors, just conjecture. Um, And, and yeah, none of our friends have told us anything, you know, our our friends who are on the inside. (laughs) <laughs> um. Let yeah, yeah. Steve's been, for those who don't know, Steve is basically uh, stepping away from Twitter for a while. We don't know how long. Uh, he, he's kind of burned out, and I blame all the politics on Twitter. Uh, I think that's fair. Yeah, um, basically, Twitter's become the spawn of Satan, and I hate it. And I really hate seeing a bunch of anonymous morons argue about politics on Twitter. I can't do it another day. So. So it's you're, you're stepping away now. for a while, and it's me for a while that people are yeah. stuck with, which is why you've probably seen an uptick in uniforms and other nonsense. Um, <laughs> hey, that's what you like. I mean, yeah, yeah. Put well, up my so nonsense. Let, let me do a other nonsense topic because this one, uh, there was a poll that you know Michael Phillips from the Richmond Times Dispatch. I'm, I'm sure yeah. you've seen him post before. Yeah, yeah. he we posted don't know him a, at all, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but he posted a fun little poll of uh, whose jersey would you rather buy right now. Uh, Terry McLaurin or Chase Young. And I thought that was a fun little topic, and we're towards the end of the show. I thought I'd throw that to you, Steve. Uh, I know you're not a jersey guy, so maybe it's, yeah. maybe it's more of a jersey, the T-shirt jersey things. Well, I have a rule that I'm not going to wear a jersey of anybody who's substantially younger than me. Yeah, I just won't ever which, do it. Which is but fair. But if you're talking, I mean... Hypothetically. Put, yeah, hypothetically, putting my anti-jersey thing aside. Um, and I'll, I'll open it up more. Yeah. Any player on this team that whose jersey you would actually think of buying? Well, I think everybody, all but a handful, would be a waste of time because they're going to be gone. Sure. You know, the, I mean, you're talking about the guys who are going to be here, and you get money, a value out of your jersey, and you'd be proud to wear it. Um, you know, I'd probably go McLaurin. I'm more of an offensive guy. Right. Um, I think he's proven himself. Chase. I mean, he's played. Yeah, everybody loves him. And to be let's be honest, though, part of the love is that he's from Maryland. He's a yeah. local guy. We don't. He's only had three sacks this year. You know, I'm not saying he's a disappointment or anything like. He's about where he should be, you know. But McLaurin has drastically outplayed, um, outplayed his draft status. He's become a team leader. That's the guy. If I was going to buy one, which I won't, I right. would, it would be him. It'd be McLaurin. Yeah, I I, I tend to lean uh, offensive guys too. I, I'm with you there. And, and I also have a weird thing about jerseys where. I weigh 210 pounds. I'm not putting on an offensive lineman or defensive lineman <laughs> jersey because that looks ridiculous. It, there's nothing funnier to me as a sports fan than when I go to a football game or watch a football game and I see a guy who's 400 pounds wearing a quarterback's jersey. Like, you just... Yeah, it's a little crazy. Yeah, yeah. You, you, sh- you should never wear a single digit if you have mad boobs. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do have a Daryl Green jersey at sure. home that if I'm going to go to a Redskin game... And wear a jersey, which I probably wouldn't. But if I did, it would be Daryl Green. I have a Cooley jersey that I would throw on at this point. That's reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who, that's reasonable. Technically, I think he's only one year older than me, but that that's fair. Well, I'm not, it's not a hard and fast rule. I just, no, no. I'm not wearing a jersey somebody who's 25. I'm just not No, I'm with it. you. I, I, yeah. I get, like, I, I've always been of the, you have to have retired a Redskin kind of mentality. Right. Or retired, I guess it'll be Washington football team here for, like, if Kerrigan no, retires next year, I would buy a Kerrigan jersey maybe because, you know, he played his whole career here, that kind of thing. And, and you're kind of in his ballpark of age and stuff. Yeah, I'm older I think Kerrigan. he's a couple years younger, but yeah. that. But you have to have played your whole career here for me to be interested in that. Because let's be honest, there haven't been a whole lot of players who have stayed and played careers here in the mm-hmm. past couple, you know, entire generation. Oh, you yeah, know, really. yeah. Well, I mean, that's rare for all teams now. But let, let's say a bulk of your career, even that's that's rare here, even. 
Yeah. You know, there's some people out there who've got Trenton Williams jerseys who are probably regretting it right now. Probably. Although, I, I think, do you think maybe five, ten years they'll kind of be over it? I, I kind of do. Um, Some will, some won't. Yeah. It depends on if you blame him or you blame the team. Sure, sure. I kind of blame both. Yeah. But I think Trent acted like a baby. And the team, you know, the Bruce Allen acted like a baby, too. I think right. they both were wrong, personally. Yeah, I, I, you're not – I think that's a fair assessment. But to me, the 30-year-old acting like a baby versus the 60-year-old acting like a baby, I'm going to – Yeah. The 60-year-old should be the adult. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why he's not employed. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Let me go over the injury report real fast. Okay, yeah, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, Kyle Allen, the DNBs, DNPs this on um, Wednesday were Kyle Allen, Thomas Davis, Antonio Gibson, Dontrell Inman. Gibson was a shoulder, Inman was a hamstring. Davis looks like he probably got a veteran's day off. And Kyle Allen, obviously, he's going to go to IR soon, presumably. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of the Lions, Kenny Galladay, Everson Griffin, um, by, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this dude's name. I always get it wrong. Vietal. The offensive lineman. Okay, and yeah. Williams. Yeah, and uh, Galladay was a hip, Vital, whatever his name is, um, foot, and then Williams is a shoulder, and then Griffin, veteran day off, looks like. So that's injury report. Okay. The Lions all right, have let... a whole bunch of people not practicing, but they were all limited, and it's Wednesday. So. Right, right. And like you said, with Allen, he's probably going to IR, which, again, opens up a spot for Bryce Love, hopefully. Or Maybe. Steven Montez. Or Steven Montez, yeah. A lot of talk, by the way. I know you're not on social media. A lot of kind of chitter chatter about Stephen Montez maybe getting on the roster if Haskins doesn't uh, do well in practices. So, you can know, you can, you can keep that in mind. Um, that's just for Steve, not for the public, because you know, screw the public on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I could definitely see it happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I nobody could too. knows how well Mon. We've not heard two words about how well Stephen Montez has been doing in practice this right. year. Well, so. why would you? I mean, no, yeah. no one's paying attention to him. Um, no. All right, let, let's do uh, predictions because okay. we're we're about done with the show here. So, all right. game prediction. Do you want me to go? or Do you want to go first? I'll go. I'll go. Right. You went first last time, didn't you? Or Jamal went first. But anyway, um, I look. I have no faith in this team right now. I really don't. Um, it's in Detroit. The Lions are a better, a crappy team too, but they're a better team. I just don't think at this point Washington can. Pro- I think they'll do better with Alex Smith under the helm than they have because mm-hmm. he's probably the best quarterback on the roster. But I just I don't have any faith at all in this team right now. So I'm going to predict a close lost to Detroit something along the lines of I don't know um like 27 24 ish I'm gonna say we finally get to 20 points under um more than 20 points under Alex okay. so I'll say 24 27 uh, lines I I, th- I I kind of am with you on the whole uh we don't we're not gonna win this uh Detroit I think we will see this secondary get exposed in a bad way. Um, and I'm going to predict a 35-28 Detroit victory over Washington. 35-28, huh? Yeah, I think I think right. I think this is like Stafford has a four TD day kind of thing. Oof, you're probably right. You're probably more right than I am. I'm trying to, I don't know. <laughs> you're probably right. I mm. probably, I probably, yeah. I no, hope I'm, I'm not. I, I'm I, I will point. always be happy if I'm wrong and you know <laughs> Washington wins. My prediction is already in wax now. I'll stick with it, but I, th- I probably think you're more right than I am. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not that different. It's a one score. <laughs> it's just <laughs> you're predicting a field goal. I'm predicting a touchdown. You know, that's True. really where it, all, all it is. Um, all right, guys. Thank you for listening. We will talk to you after the game. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed Veterans Day off if you got the day off. Later.